Hey guys, welcome back to SRBC Ninja and I am back with another interesting video of Apex Trigger Scenario Playlist. This is the 24th video of Apex Trigger series and in today's video we are going to talk about a scenario which was asked in interview. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Before going to coding part, let's talk about the data model for today's scenario. So in today's scenario, we have three objects, account, opportunity and opportunity line item. And on account, there is a field number of products. Now account is the parent of opportunity and opportunity is the parent of opportunity line item. And the thing which makes today's scenario more interesting is that there is no direct relationship between account and opportunity line item. Now let's talk about today's scenario. So in today's scenario, we need to count number of opportunity line item associated with an opportunity. And after that, we need to show that count on accounts custom field. And account is the parent of opportunity. See the twist in this scenario is that there is no direct relationship between account and opportunity line item. So we have to do something by which we can connect these two objects. Now let's talk about the approach which we are going to use today. See account and opportunity line item are not directly linked. But there is a way by which we can connect these two objects which is opportunity object. Let's see how. So in first step we will use opportunity line item to fetch opportunity ID and we will store that ID in a set. After that, we will fetch opportunity data like account ID using that set in Sokal and we will store account ID in a map and at last we will fetch count of opportunity line item records using aggregate function and after that we will update account custom field by it. In short, we will fetch opportunity using opportunity line item and we will fetch account ID using opportunity. I think that is enough for theoretical part. Let's start with coding. So let's go to VS Code and create a handler class. Let's name it trg handler let's create our method public static void trg method now we need to count opportunity line item on deletion and insertion so the change is happening on opportunity line item object that's why we will pass list of opportunity line item as parameter in our method so let's pass a list opportunity line item Let's say only list, apply a null check on this list, is empty and iterate over it. Only list. Now we need to store opportunity ID in a set. So for that let's create a set first. Set ID new set id let's add a comment set to store opportunity ids and let's add opportunity id in this set like this id dot add opportunity id now we want our further code to be executed only if this set contains a value so for that let's apply a null check like this if OPP ID is dot is empty. Now our next step is to fetch opportunity record data like account ID using IDs present in this set. So let's create a list. List of opportunity. OPP list. Select ID. Account ID. From opportunity. Where ID is present in our set. Let's iterate over it. Opportunity OPP OPP list. Now what we will do, we will create a map in which we will store account ID and count of opportunity line item record. So let's create a map like this. Map ID. Let's give it name. Count map. And in this map, let's store account ID in key and for value we will store 0 for now. Count map dot put account ID 0. Now we have stored 0 in value. This is to ensure that the map has a default value for each account, which can be updated later when the actual count of opportunity line item is calculated. So now we have account ID in our map. 
Our next step is to fetch count of opportunity line item using aggregated query. So let's use aggregated query. For aggregate result. Here we will use count aggregate function on ID. Like this count ID. And this variable will be used to access result returned from this aggregate function. Um, opportunity dot account ID um, opportunity line item where opportunity dot account ID not equals to null and opportunity dot account ID is in key of this map. Copy its name, paste it here, dot key set. Also, we need to group this field because we have not used any aggregated function with this field. So let's group it. Group by opportunity dot account ID. Now we will put account ID and count in the map which we have created earlier. So copy our map name, paste it here. Output. Now there is a way of accessing data of aggregated query. First, we need to give data type like this aggregated variable name dot get and at last we need to give field name account id. Again, we have to do same thing for count decimal variable name dot get copy this variable name and paste it here. So we have everything that we need in our map. Now we just need to update account field using these values. And we have account IDs in key of our map. So let's iterate over it. For ID, let's say IDS, count map dot key set, create an instance of account, new account, put ID like this and after that the field in which we want to put count of opportunity line item records go to our org this is the field acc dot number of products and we have count of opportunity line item in value of map so let's use get method to fetch it count map dot get ids now we will not perform dml inside for loop because it is not a best practice. So for that, let's create a list like this. List of account, list to update, new list account. Copy its name and add these coordinate. Apply null check on this list. Root is empty. And at last update it. Save it and deploy it to work. So we have our handler class ready. Now let's create a trigger. Let's name it count trg. Since we want to count number of opportunity line item on insertion and deletion. Therefore, a trigger will be on opportunity line item with after insert and after delete event. So let's set opportunity line item here with after insert and after delete. Now we have to pass trigger.new on after insert event and trigger.old on after delete event, which means we need to pass two different lists on two different events. So let's see how we will do it. First, we will apply a check to invoke our further code only on after event like this. If trigger dot is after. Now let's apply a second check for insert event. If trigger dot is insert and we will pass trigger dot new in parameter. TRG handler, TRG method and let's pass trigger dot new. Similarly, apply another check for delete and pass trigger dot old. If trigger dot is delete, 
copy this line and let's pass trigger.code. Save it and deploy it to work. So we have our trigger ready. It's time to see our code in action. So let's go to our org. This account has one opportunity on it. So let's open this opportunity. Let's add a product on it. Save it. Let's add one more product. Go to account again and refresh it. See this field contains two in it because we have two products on our opportunity. This means that our trigger is working fine for insert operation. Now let's test it for delete operation. Let's delete one opportunity. Again refresh it. Now it is showing one which means our trigger is working fine for every operation. So this is a simple use case. But in company interview, the scenario was to count opportunity line item records whose list price is greater than 50,000. So let's see how we can do it. Go to code again. Since we need to count opportunity line item records whose list price is greater than 50,000, therefore we need to do a small change in our aggregated query. Here, let's add one more condition. List price should be greater than 50,000. Save it and deploy it to work. Now only those opportunity line item records will be returned by this query whose list price is greater than 50,000. So let's test it. Go to work again. List price of this product is greater than 50,000. So we will keep it. And let's add a product whose list price is less than 50,000. So we will choose this product. Next. Save it. Refresh it again. Now if our trigger is working fine, then that field will contain only one. See, now let's add another product whose list price is greater than 50,000. Let's take this one. Save it. See the value has been changed, which means our trigger is working fine for every operation. So that's it for today guys and I'll be back with more interesting trigger scenarios. Thank you.